First, you train your body. Second, you train your mind. Hello, thanks for joining me. This is Whistlekick Martial Arts Radio, episode 388. Today, I'm joined by my guest, Sifu Clark Tang. My name is Jeremy Lesnack. I'm your host here at Whistlekick Martial Arts Radio. I'm the founder at Whistlekick, and we do stuff. We do so much different stuff. It's really hard to describe it in any other way. You can check out all the stuff we do at whistlekick.com. One of the things that we do is we make stuff. And you can purchase any of that stuff with a discount. Podcast 15 gets you 15% off sparring gear and great apparel, uniforms, and some other cool stuff. So check that out. Of course, one of the other things that we do is this show. We do it twice a week, all for free, and we've been doing it for four years. Man, we're closing in on episode 400. And you can see every one of those episodes at whistlekickmartialartsradio.com. We had photos and links, sometimes videos and other stuff to give you more context, more insight into the guests or the topic, whatever it is. And it's all because we love martial arts and we think that you do too. As I said, my guest today, Sifu Tang. We've had a lot of different folks on the show over the years, and a lot of those people tell great stories. But not all of them, in fact, I would say few of them, tell those stories with as much heart, as much openness as Sifu Tang does. I was honestly transfixed at the way he told his stories, whether they were simple anecdotes or some of the deeper experiences of his life. He goes deep, and I mean that. He goes deep quite a few times through this episode, and I hope that you enjoy it. So here it is. Sifu Tang, welcome to Whistlekick Martial Arts Radio. Hello. Thank you for uh, having me. Well, it's my great honor and my great pleasure to be here. Well, I'm looking forward to this, and, and listeners... You know, this doesn't usually happen, but we just spent about 15 minutes uh, having great conversation. And, and selfishly, I let that go a little longer <laughs> than, than maybe I should have because it was, we, we were having a great time talking. And I said, you know, I, I got to bring this back. We have to start the show. And, and there have been a couple of times where, you know, I look up and it's 30 minutes later and I ask the guest, I say, hey, can, can we just make that the beginning of the show when we started and it, just, it didn't seem appropriate today so I, I didn't i didn't do that but i've got a feeling that we're gonna have a great conversation oh yeah definitely um you know uh, going back to my college years when i was younger you know let's i am a morning person by 10 everybody knows my family my friends close friends you know like you know they can go party one or two, but for me, I don't care, uh, 10 or 11, I'd be going to car and sleeping. I'm just, I'm not that. <laughs> but I get up like 4, 4.30. I mean, that's a biological alarm. I wake up, boom. But let me tell you, like, when my buddy from a martial art, we, we will get together around probably evening, and then we can sit and talk all day until like 2 or 3 in the morning, my goodness. And... I remember my one of my uh, ex girlfriends said, "You guys, I think you guys gay. You guys start talking, and you, sometimes you're whispering each other. You know, normally you go to sleep a certain time. You don't go to sleep. Something's wrong with you. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's amazing. It uh, to me, uh, with another martial artist, when we start talking, it's almost like a fellowship. It uh, it's a uh, bringing that energy, you know, that, um, you know, at church, we do the same thing, fellowship. And I think there's no different in martial art. We do fellowship each other. We talk something positive, something great, something bigger than ourselves. And like I mentioned earlier with you, Jeremy, you take this, I'm sure you're thinking bigger than, you know, about making money, about just the business itself. it. I'm thinking we're doing this not to save ourselves, not only save ourselves, but save other people, you know that. So I'm, I'm just, I'm just thinking out loud. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Have you always been a morning person? I mean, how far back does that go? Always. Always. Even, even always. as a small child? Yes. Yes. Believe it or not. It, um, was someone well, forcing you to wake up that early? Uh, yes and no. I, I was adopted when I was one years old, adopted my grandmother. Okay. And my grandmother, very strict. 
uh, a certain time, I have to get up. And if I don't get up, I will get whipped. You know, whipping, and when I look back, it's just like, oh, you got scared whip. But actually, you know, my grandmother, she didn't whip hard. But you, you're you thinking about the whipping, you got scared, you know. Um, only a couple of times I got whipped, but most of the time I just wake up uh, normally, you know that. And that's where, where my most uh, productive hours start. Um, uh, as of right now, I still do the same way. Um, this couple of years, I have a baby. It's different. I spend time in my baby. I get up. I just stare at her. I go, geez, how did this happen? I'm trying to get away. You know, every time I start dating, I'm thinking about, oh, no, no babies, please. <laughs> and all of a sudden here, and I'm just thinking, oh, my God. Um, I just can't believe it. It's like a, a, a miracle, you know. Like, uh, how did I, how did God, you know, using me, I mean, or, or use me as an instrument to produce another, you know, person like that, and, you know. Um, and also talking about my baby, I'm, I'm, I'm going to interject a little bit here. People tell me, hey, you know, what is the most, uh, uh, the most thing you learn about martial art? And I look at my baby, I go, you know what? She is my great grandmaster. No one can teach me something better than her. And they ask me, what is that? Patient. <laughs> if she's not my baby, oh, Lord. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, like, she is my grandmaster, I'm telling you. And, and I think this couple of years, my Kung Fu improved way better than before. Because my pa now I look at patient in a different way, different like uh, almost like uh, you know a different side before patient is only like I talk, I walk sort of walking, but now Jesus I walk, even though like a certain thing that's imp impossible I look at it I make it passable. It's like it's like that you know. So. <laughs> wow. Okay, so we we've got some information about you at the very beginning and and now modern you know more now so let's let's go back let's go back and 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 kind of okay in some way split the difference so in your very early years you 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 weren't a martial artist at least you weren't at some point and you are now somehow that changed and i've yes. got a feeling that you no, I'm not going to say anything about that yet. I, I can, I can already, I'm already starting to put a picture together of how you view martial arts in the world, but I think we need some foundation for, for me to confirm that. So how did you first yes. find martial arts? Well, first of all, uh, you know, um, as a child, and if, if you tell people, uh, you talk to anyone that's adopted a child, they all have similarity. Good. You're going through this, uh, mental, um, questioning or i would say self-examine as soon as you realize you in the world and i think about four maybe five-ish i can remember back and that what it came to my mind i said geez where's my parent i look at it why am i living here why why am i why am i giving to my grandmother raise instead of my parent and all that. So you have all these questions. And what happened? My parents didn't want me. They didn't care about me, whatever. You know, all these questions. And, and in a way, those questions is a very despair question. If, if you talk to any adopt child or without parent. And, um, and it's really bothers me a lot. It, it made me really sad. Made me very, um, I don't know how to fit into this world. And then I remember one day, I mean, probably six years old. For some reason, I didn't know how I got in there. I got into a, a, a Kung Fu theater by myself. I know adult outside and I somehow I stick in there and I saw a Shaw Brother movie, Master T Long and Master Ching Tawei. They start fighting. And all that sudden, that moment, I had the enlightenment. Man, I got my answer. This is it. You know? I can feel the movement and all that. I feel like 
wow. Hey, I don't, I don't care about anything. All I do, I, if I can do this, you know, empower myself. That's uh, that's uh, that move, or you you can feel uh, you know the movement is very powerful, and uh, for some reason, that's that's the um, the the tipping point that martial art really got into me, and from there on, my God, you don't believe it. Every day I start doing form by myself, you know all that, and I. My uncle start uh, training me. He training me from there on. That 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 was it. That was it. We've heard a lot of different origin stories. A lot of, a lot of these ways that people find martial arts, and and you know sometimes it's a family thing. Sometimes right. it's uh, it's the parents saying you know oh right. we think you're lacking something that martial arts may provide. Yes, I believe yes. you were the first guest who wandered into a. Kung Fu theater as a child and saw movies. Yes. We, we've had people stumble on, on movies, but certainly not mm-hmm. at that age. Yes. <laughs> it, it, I mean, it seems like destiny, doesn't it? I believe so. Um, you know, when I look at it, well, you know, I'm a Christian and, um, you know, like, but I'll tell people, people knows me around me. I'm a Christian. I love, uh, I, I'm a Christ lover, follower, everything, but I'm not a religious person. <laughs> no way. <laughs> I don't want to stand any religion. I don't care. I'm a spiritual person. How's that? And when I look at, this is almost like a, um, you call it a pre, predestined, I think. Like God put me in a, a certain situation and then having question, then I follow this path. And then I continue, even though I didn't know what I was doing, because in the Bible, again, God used situation to, 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 to have his way. Like, for example, I'll, I'll give you a story about Joseph. Remember, Joseph, uh, his, he's the most beloved uh, son of all the brother, and the brother was uh, jealous. So, you know, um, be, you know, Put him in a, uh, a, throw him in a well, and then and then sold him, you know, to the slave. And from there on, you know, he 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 became somebody, you know that. Mm. And then again, you know, when his brother came in, he met his brother, and um, you know, um, and then see what what I like the twist about Christianity. You talk about forgiveness. And uh, you don't, you don't, you don't judge at all. That's one thing. Um, like for example, his brother came. You know what? Uh, hey, Joseph. And again, you know, we, we we're so sorry we did this to you. And you know, and then Joseph said, "No, brother, it's all God's plan. If you didn't sell me to the slave, or you didn't beat me up, or whatever, we wouldn't have this day, and I wasn't able to save you on this day." And Every time I talk talk about that, you know, it, it, it made me a little bit emotion because that's that's what Christ drive me to do. I mean, you know, I mean it just it just something and, and I think Kung Fu in some way have that spiritual level, which a lot of people, uh most people, they focus on the fighting part, the physical part. How can I kick somebody's ass? Or, you know, there's a certain technique and all of that, you know. Um technical and get on and I see some grandmaster that's all they stuck in their whole life you know like maybe they get they couldn't move they said oh I can do this technique and I go man you know give it up martial art or anything first you train your body second you train your mind and then your mind control your body now, and that is the highest level, and people that practice martial art for a year, they understand this. Now, when, when you're using your mind to control your body, it's just the movement more fluent, the movement more faster, almost like lightning, like, of course, in Wing Chun. In Wing Chun, my, my, my punch, I don't care who you are, if you can stop my punch, consider yourself one in a million, and I test this over and over. I even give people, I said, if you can stop my punch before I almost land your face, hey, 
but most people can because it's already in our mind. The mind's already hit before the body get there. So let me give you an example. Like for example, if, if you move yourself, I'm gonna go to, let's say I'm in the house right now. I say, okay, I'm gonna go to the living room. I'm start walking. You see the body slow, you start walking, dun, 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 because you are in time. Now, but if I'm in using my mind, it's not about time, it's about the time is just like lightning, impulse. I said, okay, I'm thinking I'm in the back, um, uh, the living room. I'm, your mind is just that, when you get to that level, it's just like, it's amazing, you know that. Um, anyway, uh, what are we talking about? <laughs> 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 See, I'm getting to this. <laughs> yeah, and, and the and the listener the listeners are probably laughing because this is what happens on this show is that I just let people go, <laughs> and we start we started to 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 get somewhere. So here here's what I want to ask about because you're certainly not yes. the first person to bring up their faith with regard to martial arts, and and I know that there are some yes. folks out there who get a little bit uncomfortable when we start talking about yes. faith, and. I I want I want them to reserve that that judgment and that resistance for a moment. Yes. In yes. in our initial conversation, and and you're and you're continuing yes. this here. I've got a feeling yes. that some of your perspectives on faith, we we could strip the label off of them. Yes. And a lot of people would would just see them as an extension of martial arts philosophy. Yes. Yes. So um, I I'd love to know how. The, the two your your martial arts training and your faith how they how they blend together hmm, okay uh, again if i if if i have a, uh, about 10 seconds here if i mention it but again i don't mention names so yeah. i respect everybody you know if you martial art you do martial art, you got my respect already but again this is i'm talking my res- perspective i don't mean to distract anybody as you know, in martial art, we are in the warrior world. Start with respect and with respect. And I don't mean to, you know, um, uh, step on anybody's toes. But um, uh, talking about martial art practice and my faith, well, let me put it this way. You ever see a show called Shen Yun at all? You heard about no. it? No. Okay. Uh, this is a group of um, a Chinese. Uh, oh, actually, wait. Yes, it's funny you bring that up. That's yeah. coming to Vermont very, very shortly now. I, I just had a yes. flashback to these large banners being strung across uh, yes. some of the streets in Burlington. Yeah, yeah. Please continue. Now, Sean Yoon, it means uh, when the movement, and all of a sudden, when I was watching that, and I thought, oh my God, I connect the dot. I go, voila. And, uh, after the show, I, I watch that show, you know, ne- never get tired. You know, just like the movement is beautiful. Boom, bouncing and all like, wow. And toward the end, uh, you know, they come in and tell what is Shan Yun mean. And Shan Yun meaning, you know, the movement, it's from the heaven. The movement is signified to the heaven. And then I, I all of a sudden, I connect the dots. Aha. Uh-huh. You know, if I go to church, the pastor start preaching the word and we start singing. Now you praise to God in what? Vocal, speech, and then singing. Well, again, martial art, we praise to God in our movement and that's part of communication. Um, so, and I feel, I go, man, no wonder if when every time I do my form, my mind's not here. My mind is somewhere out. I'm in heaven. <laughs> That's why uh, sometimes I, I do a, a, a certain form and all of a sudden I go, man, how did I do that? I, I forgot here. Yeah, but it doesn't matter. It's the flow. The, the meaning behind it is more important. Now, does that make sense? You go to church, right? You're singing praise to God. But hey, we're martial art. We're communicating with our movement. Like, for example, like the, uh, the native tribe, or I don't know much about uh, others, uh, but they do dances to the, their God. Is that right? Mm, yeah. Does that make sense? Or, I mean, depend on 
on a perspective, I, I think bad, bad martial artists, or I don't, I don't call them martial artists uh, because martial, martial art is for the good. And if people are using it for bad, I don't think they're martial art. They're, they just come back to me. <laughs> yeah, I would agree. I would agree. Yeah. That or they need a so, better yes, oh. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and um, so that was said, like the, it's the way we pray. Now, my faith personally, um, I was born into the Buddhist uh, family. It's not by choice. It just happened to be there. And of course, I was struggling with my life, as I said earlier, why my parents uh, gave me away and uh, why did they, nobody, why I want, you know, if I, I see other people, man, their parents hug them and all, and I feel like, man, what's wrong with me? And I grew up with this mentality. This is as a, a child without a parent. I'm not good enough. I'm not good enough. That's not me. Oh, you're going to go to college. No, that's not me. That's for people to have, you know, parent, their parents support them. Uh, you, you, you just, you know, just try to survive. That's not, that's my mentality. You know. But when I have martial art, I can see anything is possible. Almost like with God, anything possible. To me, martial art is almost like infused the, uh, the vibe of God, you know, um, you, you, uh, they call the mana, the chi. I think the chi is God Himself. If that, uh, because the chi is, if you look at it, it's the good energy there, and um, it is God. I mean, everything belongs to God. And now let's look at another level how my faith is uh, tied to martial art. Now, before I study Wing Chun. I study other martial arts. I don't care what it is. Just, okay, a song kick and punch, whatever. That gets me, you know, whatever. So I had kickboxing, taekwondo, and I even get a black belt in American Kenpo, Lama Kenpo, and then I did Tai Chi, I do yoga. You name it all, I just do it. Because martial art, when they start, it just it's hard to stop. They just keep going, you know? <laughs> yeah. See, and then, however, I know about Wing Chun a little bit, and I, I knew, and just like, wow, you know, um, I want to study that because I was inspired by Bruce Lee. I said, how come Bruce Lee's so good? His move, everything, just like, I thought, hey, I, I better learn Chi Kune Do so I can be like him a little bit, you know? And, um, and then I... I, I bought his book and I start reading the book. I go, dang, Wing Chun, huh? If I study Wing Chun, it's the root. I mean, I get Ki Kun I got everything else. I'm thinking, okay. he started Wing Chun. I want to take the same path. So my goodness, I, I'm here in Long Beach in 1980 or 1990. Um, it's very hard to find Wing Chun school. So I did finally found one in Fountain Valley, which is about, almost 30 minute drive from Long Beach to there. And I did, and with my first Sifu, um, uh, Sifu Don Fling, and he's still here with us. Um, you know, he, we, we have tea all the time. We start talking all the time. And he, he just like, you know, the word Sifu meaning father, you know, father as uh, you know, there's a saying, um, one day teacher, a lifetime uh, father, which is Kung Fu. I mean, that's something, it's uh, the difference between other uh, martial artists in terms of culture. Chinese culture, um, we, we, we tend to see things different way and uh, in terms of uh, our philosophy of Kung Fu and all of that, and, you know. Um, so, so that's... Anyway, that's that's my first uh, Sifu when, and he's his lineage. It's not even Yip Man. His lineage is come from Chan Wa Soon, and you know Chan Wa Soon is the teacher of Grandmaster Yip Man. So I study there. So the Wing Chun is a little bit different, and then uh, for some reason his school was uh, in a verge of closing down. So I went to study another uh, teacher. Uh, 
he's no longer with us, uh, Sifu Jerry McKinley. He, and in fact, uh, he's the one who trained Nicolas Cage. You know, if you watch that movie, he's um, yeah. Bangkok uh, Dangerous. If you see those moves, that was <laughs> by him <laughs> when he was alive. And he was, uh, you know, um, he's on the Grandmaster Yipman. And then my other, my last Sifu would I have, which because I study uh, Wing Chun here and I go back and forth, back and forth to um, Hong Kong and I met another uh, Sifu of mine and uh, Sifu Grandmaster Wong Long and uh, he's still alive uh, today. He practiced, he started Wing Chun on the Grandmaster Yip Min even before Bruce Lee. So that made him uh, a Kung Fu big brother, Bruce Lee, see him. He told us that he started about five or six months before Bruce Lee and then Bruce Lee came, you know. Um, and, um, now, why I'm telling you this, because uh, why, is, why it had to do with faith. Like to me, two things in my life, martial arts, God, those are the two things I always seek and always improving always now on my christian side i go to different church all the time i go to you know you name it i go different like uh i go to catholic church i go to different church and i was looking for what is the one on uh, wh what is the closest way i can get to god better and then i found my church my church we, we were talking about hey about love about God, the reason why God came to earth is because of love. And from there on, I feel like, man, I'm not a religion. Religion is just like very technical, you know, like, oh, from A to B, that's it, you know, like, um, you know. Um, so it's, uh, it's a technical and it's very dry. But when you get to a certain level as a Christian uh, life, you feel like, man, if you, you, you start feeling with, with God's love and then God's spirit in you, it really doesn't matter. You know, like, oh, you, you go to church this day. If you don't go to church this day, you know, like, uh, now, how does that compare to my, my journey of the martial art? When I study other, like, Taekwondo and all, it's all about technical and, you know, there's no, there's no, fluid there i mean you know it's all about you know uh, you know kick punch kick punch when i start to take wing chun and then uh after a year later and i expect i go oh my god everything else is almost like a religion like other but wing chun we're more than religion almost like christ like everybody go to east we're no we're going to west so wing chun is opposite for example uh, Wing Chun, we don't believe in this destruction. We believe everything is destroyed. Um, we don't believe in fire, which is like, if you look at karate, it's all about, you know, fire hitting. Ah, ah. Wing Chun will relax and everything moves so fluid. And I go, man, this, this is, and I, I even wrote my article. I said, Wing Chun is a spiritual martial art. You guys believe it or not, I can prove it to you. You know, like uh, you got to be in spirit in order to do your Wing Chun effectively, you know. If you can see all other Wing Chun around, they're very technical, go here and there. Um, I mean, there's that, that level. I mean, it, sometimes it looks great, but uh, you got to tap into another one because that's what Wing Chun is all about. Now, to describe Wing Chun, let me give you a scenario. First, you start with technical, but Wing Chun, it's, it's like this. When, when, when you start driving a car, and all of a sudden, your car get to a pothole, and it starts flipping, and you go, how's that impossible? How is that possible? The pothole, and then all of a sudden, you drive in, the car get flipped. Now, there's a physics behind that, and there's something behind it. Now, to making the flipping, that's Wing Chun. Now, you know, Wing Chun, a certain move, we use the opponent, opponent energy to do that sort of stuff. That's why Wing Chun is just like, 
If you look at it from the outwardly, it will very dry. But later on, when you understand the internal power, it's just like, oh my God, it's just amazing. And, and I think that's what set us apart from other martial arts is that not that, you know, better or not. Uh, again, it's not a style who's better. I think it's the practitioner again. I give example like, uh, do you know uh, Grandmaster Demora? Fumio Demora? Yes. Yeah, yeah he's, you know been, he's been on the show. Oh, my God. Yes, yeah. it's him. Now, I talked to him. He, he lived close by me about 20 minutes or so. And he doing karate. Oh, now, you, you, people say, oh, karate is very technical. But if you meet him, oh, my God. He's so fluent. I don't care what it is. He's that level. And I said, I don't care, you know, he's learning whatever, but man, he's going to kick your butt. <laughs> <laughs> so again, yes, I compare style again. And, and, and I know other people go, oh man, it's just different style. Well, you know, when you're on a certain level, you got to compare. I mean, you know, there, there, there's no way around it. And, but when you get to a certain level, there's no style. My God. I mean, it just, a again, it's a practitioner, practitioner. I mean, people can do, I don't care what it is. Uh, most of their life, they do over and over and over. They get to achieve uh, that level, same level, to almost like a spiritual level, if, if you, you get what I'm saying. I do. I do. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I'm curious. I'm curious. So yes. I have this theory that everyone who finds and stays in martial arts was missing something. Yes. And you've spoken several times, so I feel comfortable bringing it up about yes. the impact of being adopted. Yes. And then, of course, you brought up the point that Sifu means father. Yes. Do you think there's, there's something there? Do you think maybe martial arts wouldn't have resonated so strongly for you if you had remained with your birth parents? You're absolutely right. Well, you know, you know me as a person, gosh, I'm very, I, I'm very independent, strong-minded. And uh, I have to believe what I do. If I don't believe, I go, hey, hell yeah. You know? um, if I, that's why I look at it, everything is, is it, just the way God directed my life. And where I'm at, it's just, it just amazing, the journey. And now, I went to Concordia University. I don't know you know, that's a Christian. I was going to be a pastor. I want to be a pastor because I, because when you go through what you went through and you see other people struggling, you want to help because you went through that and you have you have a way of unlocking that misery, you know that. Because again, if you look at the people around the world, man, they they have all sort of, I'm gonna say stupid idea about themselves, stupid idea about things, stupid idea about, you know, like these all emotion and emotion, it's good, but you gotta put emotion way it should be so in other words martial art is learning how to manage your emotion you know like uh there's a certain thing you should say a certain thing you should you know think like for example um i met you know way back you know like uh a friend of mine you know like his girlfriend breakups and all he was gonna kill himself and I go, oh, my God, what a stupid things. And, and I went and, and talked to him. I said, okay, great. So you want her, huh? I, yes, I want her. I cannot live without her. I said, really? Gosh, what have she done to you? For you? For you? What is she? Is she God? I said, if she's God, yeah, you go ahead and kill yourself. But she's not God. She's another human being, man. You just, there's, there's a, there are other people there. So this is the emotion you're going through. You're just like, 
you want to have her. I said, okay, great. You can have her. What are you going to do with her? You're going to eat her? You're going to do, what are you going to do with her? She's another person. And I told him, I said, that's not love. That's selfish love. You want, to, you want her to mold it your way. If you truly love her, no, you care about her happening. What does she want? She want to leave you with other person? Good for, for her. You should be happy for her. And then, you know, after conversation, he sort of shook his, you know, he, he came out from it, you know, that. You know, um, so I think that's amazing part. Now, for my part, you know, like uh, I understand about God, martial art, you know, it's, I can steer people a certain way, you know, their emotion. Because these people, they live in their parents, they think life is a la-la land, I want a certain way, I should be this way, I'm entitled this way. The way I see life, let me, let me tell people, I look at the warrior way, you know, like, for example, here. If a certain thing I need to do, I'm going to do. Like, for example, one day, terrorists came over, they go my family, whatever. Man, I'm going to kill them before they get over my family. That's what I'm talking about. Martial art, again, let me transform to a warrior way. I mean, it, and it's not about, when, when we talk about warrior ways, we will talk about the science. We're not talking about emotion. And emotion, you want to put where it's supposed to be. Like, I read a Musashi book also. Oh, if anybody have not read about Musashi, oh my God, read about that. He talk about the warrior way, you know. Um, the Book of Five Rings, that's what you're referencing, right? Yes, yes. <laughs> and he talk about, you know, like uh, a certain strike that you have, the emotion, you focus, you come to a certain point, that's it. You know, I just like, oh my God, it just, you know, it, I think, Everybody, when they don't have martial art, they 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 think life it just everything's for granted. Everything just like oh, I have to do my way, you know. Like, and I think most of it I blame on parent upbringing, spoil them. Well, anyway, if you hey, if you have parent. You, you, you're a good son and good daughter. Hey, you, you, you're out, you're exception, okay? <laughs> I'm talking about the other part. And I think also the social media, you know, like influence that part. And they grow up, they have certain uh, expectation of life. And then their life is always, ex you know, um, always disappointed. Because, of course, when you have high expectation, if it doesn't go your way, guess what happened? You, you get depressed, you get you're unhappy. Yeah. And I think being a warrior, being a martial art, it's okay to be unhappy. It's okay to not go in your way. But let me tell you, you live a life. It's not only for you. You live for something bigger, like we, we talked earlier. Like to me, when I, I was that four years old, uh, uh, well, six years old, when I saw martial art, I, I, I touched with martial art. I go, man, I can save the world. I'm telling you. I mean, with my Kung Fu, I kill all the bad guy in the world and the world peace. That's, <laughs> that's what a child is, you know? You know, um, that's, that's uh, that heroism, you know, that. Um, so life sometimes, you know, um, it's not about you. Like, like for now, if I have a daughter now, I, and I really understand that. And, my faith with Christ, even, you know, right now, before he said, oh, well, you know, um, God gave his son to die for you, for love. I say, okay, yeah, I got it. But now I have my daughter. I go, oh, my God, I can't believe this. With her, I give up my life instant without question. Like before, I tell people, oh, yeah, I'm a superhero and all that. But I don't know. I always think, really, I really want to do this? <laughs> you know? You know? <laughs> Hey, this is the facts, you know. <laughs> but your daughter, and then I understand faith of, of, of Christ. I go, man, what God have done, sacrifice his own begotten son for us. I mean, come on. That should should be, you know, I mean, it sh should shook the world, you know, that I think. 
I, I think we can draw a lot of correlations between yes. faith and martial arts. And, and, and I don't think it's yes. an accident that yes. most of the time when, when faith comes up on this show, it's, it's usually within the, the family of Christian denominations. Because I, yes. I feel like yeah. that, that sacrifice ideal yes. is so front and center versus at least my understanding of, of other, other religions. And yet in martial arts, in order to progress, you, you're making sacrifice. At the very least, you're yes. sacrificing your body and your time. But quite yes. often, yeah. as any of us who have been training for a long time know, you're sacrificing sometimes friendships and personal relationships. And, and sometimes you're sacrificing meals out. And there's just there's yeah. so much that we often ignore or neglect the right, priority right. that we place on martial arts. And that's why I wanted you to go a little bit deeper right. on that, because I think that, that sure. there, there's really something there. We don't talk about martial arts from the perspective of sacrifice very often. Yes. And I think it's yes. easier for us to look at religion, at, at faith, spirituality, whatever you choose to call it. I think it's yes. easier to discuss that notion of sacrifice because it's it's yes. more front and center. It's more prominent yes. when we talk about the, the stories that come out of really any faith. Right. But martial right. arts, and and I I guess I would argue anything, any pursuit requires sacrifice mm -hmm. of something. The yes. question is, is it yes. is it worth it? So I I want to yes. continue that in a sense and ask you about has it been worth it? You know, you've you've told us a lot about you and your story and your upbringing. And so when you look at where you are now as a martial artist, when you look at the, the challenges and, and, and the pain and, and however you choose to organize the, the past, when you look at it, mm -hmm. has it been worth it? If you, if you could undo yes. it all, yes. would you? I would do it again. <laughs> okay. And and I expected that answer. So the question is why? Yes. Now, as you know, that going back to my childhood, the way I, 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 I thought of the world, the world I go, how can I fit in this world of my circumstances? And then I found God, I found martial arts. Now, the reason why I take this, now, I feel like this, I need this. It's almost like a nourish food. If I don't do this, I will die. I'm telling you, I get to that. If I go, if I don't, I don't pursue Christ, I'm going to, when I, when I say I die, I mean spiritually dead. Or maybe physically, you know what I'm saying? You know, like uh, going back, you know, uh, I remember somebody said, you know, like if you die of, uh, if you don't eat food, you die, you, you will die a certain way, uh, maybe two weeks or uh, water, it's 30 days or whatever. And then he said, if you spiritual die, you're already dead already. <laughs> you know, like... Uh, so when I pursue, when I get up and do martial art, and I feel like I am getting closer, closer to my life. I'm getting closer, closer. It's almost like drive me that I'm, I'm pursuing something, but I'm pursuing closer, closer to that, um, that notion of being free, being being liberated, being like, uh, for example, like uh, I seen uh, again. I seen people uh, when when they they've been religion all their life, especially older convert. They were a certain you know religion, and all of a sudden they got oh they feel guilty a certain thing you know like all their life they carry over, and all of a sudden. They became a believer of Christ. They go, Christ died for me? Oh, my God. You should see tears in his eye. I go, oh, my God. My life, I, 
I have all of this. Isn't that great? Now I, I can take off that burden and see it and give it to Christ. And now you know that you're not tied to that. You're born meant to be free. So why are you putting the burden yourself? You know, like that, you know, like, uh, so as for me, yes, sacrifice. When I go through martial art, yes. Um, when I go to start dating and people just say, hey, I demand time or whatever, you know, that's why I couldn't stay in a lot of my relationship because of that, because I choose martial art, choose God, because that's my life. You know, if people can't understand that, they just don't get it. You know, like, uh, and I don't, and, pl and plus those two, I can sacrifice anything for that. You know, yes, that's, is it worth it? Yes, it is worth it. And um, that sacrifice, because I needed it. I need to live. I need to, because I want to be free from whatever I'm thinking, you know, all is like, hey, you know, um, I'm not fit in the world because, you know, you don't, don't worry about a parent, you know, like a, you don't have a certain way. Until today, you know, I always often say, oh, my God. Imagine if I can just hug onto my dad and just say, oh, dad, I love you, whatever. I mean, man, that would be, that's the moment, you know, that but you're not going to get that. And, uh, and, uh, and again, when, when I went to competition when I was younger, sorry, a little more no, emotional okay. here. It's okay. Um, Take your time. I seen other kids, man. They're kicked like a. They start doing the form. I go, oh lord. <laughs> and the parent, go, oh honey, that's really good. That's really good, you know. Yeah. And uh, man, like for me, I take grand champion too. For me, nobody cares for me, you know. So. Uh, I feel like Jesus. So, um, mm. so it doesn't matter what I do. It just nobody there. And um, anyway, um, so as you can see, I'm very emotional touch when I get to that subject. You know, yeah. it's uh, so I need God. I need martial art for me to live. So yeah, if I'm, I'm gonna sacrifice everything, yes. Yeah, I'm gonna sacrifice everything. Because this is my life on the line. I'm not doing martial art for, to look good. I'm not doing martial art for, just check off the bucket list. No, martial art is my life. And everybody around me knows that, you know, like, uh, yeah. So anyway. <laughs> Sorry, I mean, it's Please always. Uh... No, it, it... <laughs> you know, one of the things that's nice about the podcast format is that people get to listen and listen however, wherever, whenever they choose. And it allows them to sit with it and to press pause and to contemplate and to listen to parts again. And I suspect that there are folks out there who may have listened to some of that again or or might have pressed pause because they're tearing up. Um, you know, admittedly, I'm fighting back some tears um because I I have to host the show. So I don't I don't have the <laughs> I don't have the luxury of crying with you right now. Uh I'm gonna do that later because and not everyone's going to relate to every aspect of what you're talking about. But many of us, maybe even most of us, are going to relate to some of it. And there's a lot that you just talked about that hits home for me. I wasn't adopted, but pretty much everything else you're talking about is, is pretty square for my experience as a child. So I want to I shift gears now. We, we've, we've come through a, a, a pretty powerful place, and I want to make sure that we take some time to use that as a foundation 
I want to, I want to look forward. I want to look into the future. You know, I, I have no doubt that your relationship to martial arts, your relationship to your faith are going to continue. But I'm curious how you see that, that manifesting. You know, you're going to continue to train. You're going to continue to be the person that you are. But what are you hoping to accomplish? If you're not going to be able to use your martial arts to, to bring about world peace by beating all the bad guys in the world, <laughs> what are what are you going to do with it? Well, you heard of Wing Chun Temple, don't you? Yeah, <laughs> yeah Wing Chun Temple again. Um, when my Sifu told me, "Hey, you know, I'm I'm ready to go and start my own school, Wing Chun." Now he said, uh, "Wing Chun is the most." You know, if you look at Shaolin, they got two or three hundred form, American Kenpo, like probably 40 or 50 form or maybe more. So all other martial arts style system have a lot of forms. Wing Chun, we only have what? Six form. That's it. Three empty hand, one a wooden dummy, a long pole, and and a, a butterfly knife. And when you do, do the form, one thing about Wing Chun, I want to tell people, it's almost like, now again, in college I took music appreciation. So the way I listen to music from, it's different now because I know how to listen now. You know, like uh, I love the most is classical music, like Mozart. If you look at it, his, his, uh, his music is very balanced, symmetrical, and what he said on a thesis, that's what he's gonna present throughout. Wing Chun is almost like that. It's a very elegant martial art. Like the first form, Silam Tao, the idea, the first idea or little idea on that. They set out the thesis throughout the system. When you get toward the end, you're still coming back to the beginning. So ending, beginning, ending, beginning is almost like very well balanced. Um, again, the first form, it's like that. It's like the, the alphabet. And then whatever you write, you always use the alphabet. So that's why uh, Wing Chun, it just, that's the way I, I look at it. And it's it just amazing. It's um, now, so in order to be progress in your learning of Wing Chun, you got to start, well, you got to, in school, we have a system, you know, like a, a little brother, a big brother, and a newcomer, you know. So we always, and with, you know, seafood permission, of course, you know, when, when we learn something, we sort of like master a little bit. We start showing other people. Again, we don't use the word teach. When you teach someone, that means, oh, I teach you. No, you cannot teach anybody. You show people. Now, who can they teach? They teach themselves, you know? So when you use the word teach, you're just like, oh, I get the credit, I'll teach you. No. When in Kung Fu, it's different. You show the person, and the person had to practice thousand, thousand, ten thousand of times. And they get it, they go, oh, man, see? So they are teaching themselves. So when you show other, you learn a little bit. You show other, learn a little bit. So anyway, I came. So when I go, okay, so it's ready for me to get a school here. Um, and plus, we, we don't have a lot of Wing Chun school. Most Wing Chun master, a lot of great Wing Chun master out there. And let me tell you something. They are the sky. They don't want to show their, their skill is phenomenal. And I'm, I'm telling you, and they'll, they don't even care about sharing with anyone because a certain thing that is so good, when you share it, it's spoiled. And I think one of those Wing Chun is that one. Again, like for example, when, when Christ said, uh, send his disciple to give the good news of Christ, and if they don't want it, 
it's almost again and just like oh man slap in the face you you tell me that you know christ died for you take all this and you can be free all your life and you don't want that it's just like ah that is so insane you're not in your right mind you know wing chun is like that when when you met a certain master they they show you something and just like oh my god phenomenal and a certain tweak certain that and you know what and you you gotta you gotta have the right mind the right attitude you gotta earn their re, you know their respect first before they start even show them that because if you show them and they don't understand they make fun of it or they talk about it just like oh man you know as be a martial artist you learn all these years and the learning it's not come easy you got to take a little bit here, a little bit there, a little bit of fight here, fight there. You do all this. You start learning. It's not easy to come to that conclusion, you know that. And now you got this. You gave to the other person. The person don't understand. They go, ah, you know. And that's kind of hurt, you know. That. <laughs> or again, it's almost like disrespect to the art itself, you know. Like, so that's why, you know, um, I'm telling you, I know a lot of great Wing Chun Grandmaster out there. They're not, they don't want any credit. They won't want anything. You, you got to know them, you know, like uh, those out there. Again, they don't want to start school because it's, it's commercialized and they don't want to deal with that. And I think what I do, it's almost like among a few that, hey, you know what? I feel that this is important. When I look at it, it's beyond the skill of fighting skills, beyond of self-protecting. And I tell people, I said, well, yeah, you learn self-defense, but you're learning one part of self-defense, protecting your physical. That means if somebody hurts you, you're able to block and hit back, you hurt them. Great. I mean, nothing wrong with that. What if mentally, let me tell you, like some people always say, oh, you've, you got bully all your life or talked down by, you know, your parents or your guardian. You go, oh, you're no good. You're nothing, nothing. You know what? You're, imagine that's beating down on the mind. And look, how do you defend that? Yeah, that's why all these, these, these kids, one day they flip, they go, I don't give a F. I'm going to shoot everybody else and I'm going to take my life. I'm done with this. Now, how do you explain that? You see that? That's defending the mind part. When I look at it, def yeah, you self-defend your physical, your mind, and your spiritual. Yeah. And how do you de defend your spiritual part? I'm telling you, you need God. If you don't have God, evil is lurking. <laughs> I'm just saying from my perspective, I don't mean to be little, little like that, you know. But if for me, it just like your your spiritual part is almost like an empty cup. If you don't fill with something, guess what? Something gonna be filled in there. So might might as well feel something good, you know. And when you feel something good, the bad stuff is hard to come in. It it doesn't mean it won't come in. It will try, you know, like that. Um, like, uh, again, I, I work in a, as you know, I work in the social service field, you know. Um, so I, a lot of people came up with lives a lot and I, I be able to, you know, share people. A certain people there, uh, they have difficulty, a certain thing, like for example, using drug or whatever. And they say, oh man, uh, I can't do a certain time. I just might, I can't control. I got to do this a certain time. I said, okay. Let's say uh, from three to three to six, you can control that. I said, okay, fine. Then from there on, do something else. Fill that time with something else. Let's see what happened. If you busy something out, guess what happened? The other stuff. Jesus, you forget about me now. So after a while, they go, okay, I, you, you never mind. You you don't care about me. So see, Satan li will leave you <laughs> alone. You know, see, it's it's about gravitate. If you gravitate to something. This is what you're going to get. You reap what you sow. If, if you do good, 
the fruit is going to be good. You know, like, uh, that's why I tell people, if, if you tell me you're Christian, your action is not Christian. Oh, no, you're, you're not a Christian. If you're a Christian, a good tree will always give good fruit. And that's the bottom. Line. I don't care. If you're a Christian, you're Muslim, you're Buddha, I don't care who you are. It just that that is my baseline. Good tree will give good fruit. Like you can say whatever, do whatever, but your action toward the end, the bottom line, you're doing bad. Hey, you, you you're not good yourself, you know. So um oh. so um so I found Wing Chun Temple. And why did I find it? Because when I was young, I always, my dream was to go to Shaolin Temple. I didn't mind at all, like, hey, you know, my grandmother gave a Shaolin Temple. I want to do practice martial art and learn, you know, learn the knowledge part. And then I, and then all of a sudden I'm thinking about, wow. And also I'm thinking about the Bible part. I go, man, the Old Testament and the New Testament. See, the Shaolin is an Old Testament. They've been here for years, uh, uh, trees. Um, and all of a sudden, I go, man, I got it. Let's make a New Testament of martial art, Wing Chun Temple. We're the we forget about the traditional monk. You can shave your head and you put on, again, I don't want to hurt me. Pretend to be a monk and really, I don't care, you know, your life. I, I know a lot of people like uh, they're among, but you know, we all human being. Come on, um, you know. Like then I go, Wing Chun Temple is the New Testament of martial art, because we are modern. We don't need to shave our head, put on a rope. No, we we are modern among What in our heart is important, just like Christ said. You know, like you know, you can. You can show show yourself, like you know. You said, you know, this is on a sermon on the mount, and uh, a lot of people say, "Oh God, I never sinned." He said, "Okay, great. Um, have you ever hate your brother? No, uh, I mean, kill your brother." And uh, when when Christ asked, he said, "No, I never kill my brother. I never kill anybody." Okay, great. You ever hate your brother? Yes, I hate him. Well, you already kill him in your mind. If you can, you would. I know that. And I know so. If I hate someone, gosh, if you can't, oh, man, I'll be the Dexter. I'm going to tear you apart piece to pieces. But, you know, that's in your mind, you know. So you already killed your brother already. So, you know, so what in our heart and mind is more important than ours. So, yes, uh, Wing Chun Temple, we're, you can say that. Um, try to create an, an outlet for other people. Uh, to see, to seek their their peace, I said, practice Wing Chun. Be, I, I'll tell people all the time, I said, you, you not only practice it for the physical self-defense, mental and spiritual, this is what Wing Chun Temple is at. And we're the modern monk and we're modern nun. And uh, what is our heart is important. And as you know, this is, I'm talking this to a uh, Wing Chun practitioner. In order to be a good Wing Chun practitioner, you have to have a clear mind and a clear heart. You got to have a good intention. In a way, it's almost like it, it, it is a Buddhist martial art. If you, that day you have a certain way, it's, it's your fire coming out, that's not Wing Chun. That's, that's too power. The power is manifest a certain way, you know, like uh, like like water instead of fire, you know, like uh, that's that's the energy we're we're, we're talking about, you know, um, controlling, 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 like uh, like for example, um, I give you an example, like uh, when Christ, this is the only time. When Christ ever recorded to be sleeping, not in, uh, if you look at it in the Bible, um, when the storm coming in, everybody like, Lord, how could you sleep when there's storm, you know? And, and, and then, you know, and then Christ go, gosh, 
why are you so unfaithful, little faith? He came and calmed down. See, that's what Wing Chun's all about. When you see the guy do all that flashy move and you just, uh-huh, just square part. And then that moment, don't think about yourself. Anticipate in his move. So in other words, it's not about the past or the future. It's that moment, the present. How do you react to a certain thing? Not because of you want to do a certain thing. No, because your opponent. That's why Wing Chun is adaptive. Like, for example, he is using a hard kick, a side hard kick. What are you going to do with that? Well, you can do, uh, they, they call this a gun. And then again, the quote Wing Chun, we, we, we don't only block, we strike too. You do gun and also break his knee at the same time. So that's one of the movements we can counter. But again, it's not in the mind. It's not planted at just that moment. You know, um, so um, that's what Wing Chun is, and uh, yeah, mm. is that sort of answer? I know I'm just I got a lot of stuff. I, I, I don't even know. <laughs> you know, my job my job is to keep you talking. My job is to ask a question and just see where it goes. Oh and, my God, I can talk for I can talk forever. I, you I know, when tell. it comes to Wing Chun, man. I can tell, and that's a, that's a great skill to have, and and I think it's a common skill among martial arts instructors. I don't think I've known yeah. a martial arts instructor who can't talk. Well, <laughs> <laughs> well a, a good way of uh, my Sifu, my, my uh, last Sifu, Sifu Kwan Wang Long. Now, um, in Grant, uh, I'm pretty sure you know about Yip Man movie in Grandmaster Yip Man. Sure, yeah. Yes. Grandmaster Yip Man, I wrote down, I said, there's only two good-looking students. One Bruce Lee and one is my Sifu, Sifu Wang Long. <laughs> Good looking guy. The difference between the two, and I tell him to his face, Bruce Lee can talk, he can sell. And Sifu, you can't talk. He said, we talk, he doesn't know what to do. Oh, just go, come on, what do you want to show me? He start doing chi sao. He said, talk hand, I don't know how to talk. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. And, and, and you know what? But let me tell you how I met him, and I, I, I feel like, oh, man, he is the real deal. I'm telling you this, you know, Wing Chun community, and everybody knows this. If you hear Wong Long, they all shake in because Grandma Wong Long, oh my God. I, 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 I'm going to say for him, even Bruce Lee, I don't think he was taken. He's that good, that good. I can say that good in other skills. And also, if you look at his arm, his leg, conditioning well. You know, his arm, he conditioned, I mean, uh, from what uh, his wife's telling me, he started kicking wood and then kicking iron. Can you imagine? You know, I, I'm good at kicking, you know, kicking. I, I practice a lot of kicking and I condition all of you. But when I got into him, oh, my God, he really he did hurt. Imagine he kicked uh, he kicked an uh, iron bar. I said, "Okay, that's it." Okay. <laughs> so with him, it's not only a good skill. And I tell people, I said, "You know, you can have a flashy move, good skill, and all that, but without good conditioning, you are you're not that great." In a sense, you have the move, but if you cannot take punches or you cannot take kick, you cannot take man, you're you uh, you know you sort of set back. And, and again, that's why I tell grandma's a Demorai, oh my God, he's the same way, conditioning, my goodness. Man, you cannot touch him, he just bam, bam, bam. <laughs> so that's, that's what I'm talking about. And not only that, look at his heart. You know, this is how I met him. Uh, I'm going to share a little bit how I came and met my Lasifu. So we're going... Kong Kong back and forth, back and forth. We all practice. And of course, as a Wing Chun practitioner, you always find way to sharpen your skills. You know, um, you cannot stay where you're at because again, Wing Chun is an organic martial art. It's a living art. So what, what I'm trying to say is organic a living art is like this. When you grow old, your body depleted a certain way, you got you to gotta compensate some. You start learning. 
that's why you see this old man. I see who old man. He's old and Bruce Lee. He's uh, eighty something now. You cannot touch him. That's why, because he's that good. He can feel your movement even before you know it. And that, and and I think the same way. When uh, well, one one of the student of uh, Grandmaster Jerry Putet. You know who that guy is, Jerry Putet. I've heard the name, but no. Yeah, Jerry, uh, Grandma said Jerry Putet. He passed away already. You know, um, he's one of Bruce Lee's student, very close student. He's also in the uh, um, Bruce Lee story movie with Jason Scott Lee. He was in that too. And one of his students shared with me that uh, when Bruce Lee went back to Hong Kong, and again tried to chi sao with um, Grandma said Yipman. And then afterward, he called to Grandma said, Jerry, he go, Jerry, God damn it, this guy is old, and he smoked. I cannot even get close to him. What the hell? <laughs> <laughs> That's what Wing Chun is. Wing Chun, when you get older, your body, you come to say with something out. I would say almost like intrinsic uh, anticipation of reaction and build it. Uh, you know, at uh, and that's what my Sifu is, my goodness. I want to hit him here. He already, uh, I, I feel uncomfortable. I almost fall. I might want to move here. You and I go, oh, man. It just, there's no way. Just you like, and I go, Sifu, I am hopeless now. <laughs> he was laughing. But now let me show you how I met him. I met him. Yeah. So when I get back and forth, and we have at the gym over there in Hong Kong, we went. We, we go and practice. And him again, he's very, to me, he like a living Buddha. My goodness. All he does is good stuff. That's why I'm telling you, when you're a practitioner, it's hard to be bad. When we're going to, when we go turn dark, we, when we turn bad, guess what? Our Wing Chun is turned bad the same way. <laughs> so we got to be good. <laughs> so with him, when I met him, and then I go uh, one time, I just I very noticeable, and uh, and then uh, when he start practice, and we stay the whole thing, and then he he start to you know everybody start to leave, say okay, it's time to go. We gonna tradition is uh, after practice we go to eat, so we are gonna go eat. Okay, great. So everybody pack up, ready to leave. But him, this is what he does. Imagine. He's a grandmaster. Kong, uh, Grandma's a Yip Man student, a big brother to Bruce Lee. Now, he's that, but he just don't care about that. But this is how we look at him like that. And then he start looking at under the couch, under the, you know, under the chair. And I say, See, why are you looking at that? He said, well, you know, in the past, people, you know, leave their cell phone and stuff like that, you know. So that's why you look at it. You see how he looked out for other, you know, his student and all that. And I said, oh, okay, I see. And then, are you ready to go? He said, no, I need to sweep because, you know, if we don't keep clean, they won't let us practice here some more. Man, he take a broom and start sweeping. Oh, man. And that moment, I feel like, oh, my God. I can't believe this. How can you have this? Why don't you use one of your students? He said, no, no, they're busy. I'm, I'm okay. And I always imagine this is the Kung Fu. This is a Kung Fu story that I read. One guy, he was looking for the master, went to the, you know, to the temple. And he saw one, uh, one old man start sweeping. And he said, I'm looking for the master. And, uh, and uh, he said, well, uh, what do you want? The ma uh, you know, the, uh, the old sweeping, you know, asked him, what do you want? He said, I want to look for the master. And again, he said, is there anything we can help you? No, not you. I want to look for the master. <laughs> and later on, he realized that, oh, my God, he is the master. Don't you know in the Chinese martial art um, world, we send that the highest skill, the higher grandmaster will 
will have don't have a problem is the guy who sweep. So in other words, if you hired in rank or you know you understand that you're wise, you don't have a problem do little stuff. Again, let me reflect that to Christ. That moment I reflect myself to Christ. Remember uh, when Palm Sunday, you know, they kind of crucify Christ and then um, they wanted to wash his feet and 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 all the disciples, Lord, let, let me let me wash your feet. No. And the and Christ said, no, I, I'm the one that washes feet. No, not you. Now, that moment, I feel like that with my, my Sifu, and I go, oh, my God. I think I found the, the master now. Because look at, a, look at a real world. This is this is reality. Normal world. If you got status, you got power, you got fame, guess what happened? You can do whatever you want. Seriously. You got that, you got that power or you know, you got that, uh, what did I say, that, that privilege to do it. You can do it. But you know what? You choose not to do it. You choose to be common people, to be, to serve. I mean, to me, that's what Kung Fu is all about, to serve. You, the more you serve, you feel like, oh, you know what? That's what we're here for. You see that, sir? And, and trust me, I met a lot of Kung Fu master out there. They're abusing their power. Oh, I, you know, you know like, um, I'm not going to say whatever. Um, but I feel that that's not the way Kung Fu is. That is the way of Kung Fu. From there on, my God, I said, oh, I'm going to follow him. I'm going to. <laughs> I'm gonna make him my teacher. <laughs> it's almost like cry. I'm gonna make you a fisherman, <laughs> fisherman, <laughs> fisherman. Oh, yeah. So yeah. So um, and my seafood was so humble and so clean, and you know, oh my God, it's it, that the person. I I mean, that's with the inspiration, and uh, it just. And and guess what? In the Wing Chun world, hardly nobody know him. Until I came along, I start talking about him. People go, <laughs> "Oh, who is he?" Oh, man. And in the Wing Chun world, they know, but they shut their mouth. They go, "Hey, don't bring him out. Hey, don't bring him out." <laughs> <laughs> like that. But you know, like he's that person. You know, like oh, my God, um, yeah. That's great. So my 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 vision is. Um, in a way, and and I had this vision, so uh, I want to I want to tell people that hey, the world's gonna have problem, and that's normal, and there's a way to to be out. You don't have to buy into a certain thing, you know. And with martial art, when you practice, you have the will to free yourself. You know, to free yourself and to make a certain decision or to to say something back and give you that permission to say hey you know what i don't need to do that no it's it's what i hold we call it virtue ethics virtue mm -hmm. ethics is you got to do what's right even though nobody watching and being a martial artist i feel that we in the warrior world that we have to embrace that. Now, if we share that, imagine share that to the world, and um, the world gonna be a better place. I see family fighting. I see over stupid things, and when you look at it, oh my God! It's because again, it's about management their emotion, their temporary emotion made them suffer for permanently in their lifetime. And that doesn't make sense at all. You know? No, I agree. Um, a certain thing that you do with three things that we can control ourselves. We can control other. First, start with our thinking. 
always our thinking. Second, what we say, we can control that. Third, what we do, we control that. So not, not only that, so what you think, you know, people can, like my workplace people, oh man, I, I, I don't like that guy, that guy, you know. And I, you know, I could have go like, oh yeah, I don't like that guy too. No, but I always think, wait a minute, that's from his side point of view. No, I don't have to take that. You know, like, see, in other words, studying martial art gave you that power to say, hey, you know, hey, I, I make my own decision, not what you said. So that's the freedom of that. Oh, and then you always look at the good, good thing about them. I don't care if you take, unless it's evil, take any uh, bad people or whatever, you always see good thing in them. And when you see good thing in them and you tell them that, hey, that, the, that they're doing what is that good, you bring that goodness out. You don't care about the bad stuff. When you bring the good out, all the bad stuff will leave because, again, like our spirit is like a cup. A cup only contains a certain, you know, volume, you know, of, of space. And you feel there's something good. I mean, just like the bad stuff is always leave by itself. You know, man. Hmm. So, yes. And, um, and what you do with it, you know, well, you know, to me, I feel like we should have as much as we have should have compassion of it ourselves, we have should have compassion on other people. Because again, we are them, them are we, we are the same. Even though we're 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 different person, different nationality, but I'm telling you, we have the same heart, same feeling. Well, we eat the same, we in order to survive, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um yeah. You got to look at that way. You don't want to look at the, oh, man, you know, uh, he's black or he's white. He must be Kwilo. He's You know, people is people. You got to start that base. You know? And, uh, yeah, yeah, so so my hope, my hope in the future, and I I want Wing Chun Temple to, to have a, a place for education. Like, people can educate that public school, again, they neglect off. They don't care about that. It's all about funding and all that. Only a few that take initiate to talk about that. Now, as our modern move to the future, future we're losing a lot of stuff. And, you know, nowadays, you know, kids, they don't care. They don't care about respect. They don't care about, you know, whatever. And Wing Chun Temple, no, we're going to take that back. No, we care about this. We do care about you. We care about your feeling. We care about it will, you will be okay. You know? Great. So, um, and you're not alone. You're not alone. There, yes. there are a lot <laughs> of listeners who are nodding their heads saying, yeah. 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 So if, if people want to learn more about you or, or Wing Chun Temple, where would they, where would they go online to do that? Um, they can go on a website, uh, www wingchuntemple.com uh, Wing Chun it's W-I-N-G Chun is C-H-U-N Temple it's just like temple.com um, and then I guess I'm on Facebook for Clark Tang Clark Tang there and you know um, yes and I do love to talk about Wing Chun and uh, I talk to a lot of people uh, you know it's so funny Wing Chun you know, ancient community and most martial artists know we have a lot of problem with politics in um, politics, which is internal conflicts. It's been like that for years. Yeah. And I think right now, and I came over and I said, no, no, no. Because you guys, because everybody think they're good because you look at, and I tell people, you look at the world, if, if I'm here, like for example, you in uh, Vermont, right now you're about what three almost 3 p.m right now mm -hmm. right yeah and we're here in california we're almost 12 your boss is right but you're in a <laughs> different place <laughs> come on you look the same way <laughs> and i tell people you're doing wing chun the same way 
Are you good? You're both good. You don't need to be. No. You, this is how I look at it. Look at the world. You win, I win. There's no loser. If we lose, you lose. Like, for example, if I help you, later you're going to help me. Is that win? If you don't help other people, it's hard to other help people. It should be a shift in a paradigm. Yes. Right. You win, I win. That's, no. That's the perfect way. Yes. And, um, and, and that's why, you know, I, I, tr I travel and um, I know a lot of Wing Chun Guy Master and my Sifu tell me, man, you're the first person that ever brings Wing Chun people come in the room and they start not looking. I say, yeah, <laughs> because we're talking something that they can relate to. Uh, Wing Chun, it's that Wing, Wing Chun, it's just um, a customized art because when, when, when they get Wing Chun, they form formula. Like if you look at it, Wing Chun uh, practitioner look at it, then not not a member the same because it's almost like a formula, like MC square. You apply to this person, you came for this person, and you came because the reason why because our body size, our personality, our stature is different, and how we apply is different. Because again, Wing Chun is not technique; it's about physics behind it. If I'm taller. I want to hit down. If you're shorter than me, you want to hit up because that gives you that leverage to overpower. So that's, that's physics, pure physics there. Mm -hmm. And I think people to, and also I think, and then people said, oh, well, you know, maybe you're, you're a big Asian. That's why they scare of you to be as uh, most Asian <laughs> that practice uh, martial arts, especially Wing Chun, they're, they're small because, uh, you know, they, and I, and I said, maybe. Or just, I don't know. I, and I tell people, oh, I just love people. <laughs> Even though, you know, all my friends know, if they hate me, I said, I still love you, man, if you hate me, because I'm sorry, hate is too heavy. Love is lighter. <laughs> and and that, that's where we're going to start to wind down. That is the perfect, I've, I've been looking for it. I've been yeah. looking for the perfect spot for us to take a transition. <laughs> so, of course, listeners, yeah. if you're new to the show, those links that Sifu dropped, just a little bit ago, we'll have all of those linked at the show notes, whistlekick, yes. martialartsradio.com. I've got a feeling you'll, you'll get some, some folks reaching out to you because this has been a very unique conversation, at least as far as our show goes. And as the listeners know, we, we ask all of our guests to kind of send us off in a similar fashion each time. And not that you haven't been providing this sort of information the entire conversation, but what parting words would you give to the folks listening today? I tell people, I said, religion will fail you, politics will fail you, but not martial art. Put your kid in martial art. The earlier plant a good seed, so when they, they go shoot off, even though for a short time, I would say, they always remember, oh, my God. And I tell, I meet people all the time. I remember my parents put me in a martial arts school. We learned this. We learned so much. And, and you know, those people that talk to me, they are some, they are something in, you know, they're not a bum. They don't turn out to be a bum. They turn out to be something. So I have to tell people, I said, you know, yes, martial art is the way. I mean, stop living in the environment that adapting to an environment of social media, how we, oh yeah. Um, it's called domestication. If you, I'm only to the four agreement. If anybody that know about the four agreement that we grew up, we domesticated even our language, our environment, our way of living. And I'm telling you, learn martial art, put on a warrior. You can live the way your life lives. One of the aspects of this show that listeners don't get to see is the feedback. And when we have an episode like this, where a guest is this open, there's honest and really just lays it all out there for everyone. I get a lot of feedback. People who identify with episodes, with the guests, and with their experiences. And I have no doubt that there are people typing away right now. Thank you so much, Sifu, for sharing of yourself today. I really appreciate it. You can find a lot more about Sifu Tang over at whistlekickmartialartsradio.com. A bunch of photos, 
links to everything he has going on, and even a photo with him and a very recent past guest. Don't forget whistlekick.com and the code PODCAST15 to get 15% off everything that we make, whether it's sparring gear or maybe you're in the market for some fun new shirts, cozy sweatpants, hoodies, sneakers. We've got a lot of great stuff. Check it out if you haven't. We add new stuff all the time. You can find all of our social media with the handle at Whistlekick. Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and Instagram are our primary accounts. And you can email me directly, jeremy at whistlekick.com. We keep it easy. Thanks for coming by today. I appreciate your support, but that's all I have until next time. So train hard, smile, and have a great day. 